Welcome to a journey through the history of art. We will travel along a timeline from the caves to the 19th century. My name is Dr. Jean Ouellette. Let's begin by making the familiar unfamiliar. By the mid-17th century, Baroque art was an international style, distinguished from its predecessor, the classicism of the Italian Renaissance, by its exaggeration of, and play with, antique forms. And, unlike the Italian Renaissance, the Baroque style was uniformly adopted in Northern Europe, and artists flourished in this international art market. In fact, the Italian artist Gian Lorenzo Bernini came to the attention of the Sun King, Louis XIV, in France. Louis ended the lingering feudal powers of his nobles by summoning them from their own castles to his new palace at a former hunting lodge in Versailles, about 20 miles outside of Paris. Bernini's marble portrait bust of the Sun King in full flowing wig shows the now absolute monarch as a dramatically supreme ruler. With this concetta of the secular king holding godlike power, Bernini set the standard for state portraits to come. Indeed, his model for an equestrian portrait of the French king commanding a dramatically wearing horse overshadows Anthony Van Dyck's equestrian portrait of Charles I. One glance at the comparison and you know which king dominated Europe politically and militarily and which king lost his throne and his head. But Bernini's portraits of the French king were mere propaganda components in an impressive palace dedicated to power. The architects of Versailles, Louis Laveau and Jules Ardouin Mansart, designed a long, low, horizontal chateau, stretching out, expanding its reach and control over a long vista, a garden designed by André Le Nôtre. Baroque plans, whether interior spaces like the Hall of Mirrors or exterior spaces like Bernini's Piazza for St. Peter's and the Gardens of Versailles, featured straight lines of sight, perfect for surveillance, so necessary for the growth and maintenance of absolute despotic power. The palace is raised high above the gardens, rules over nature, now ordered by art, just as France is now subjugated to the Sun King. The careful geometric parterre containing carefully clipped plants are placed on either side of a central corridor, punctuated by a series of fountains. The layout of the gardens of Versailles, created by Le Note, allowed for circulation, maximum exposure of visitors, and surveillance of the palace population. More than the buildings themselves, the Chateau, the Grand Trianon, the Petit Trianon, and the Amo were expressions of secular power and of the rising interest in science as a means to master nature. King Louis XIV was able to control the architects and the artists at Versailles, but what about the rest of the French artist? As will be discussed in the next podcast, King Louis XIV would change the way in which art was practiced when he established the Royal Academy in France that resulted in the separation of the Beaux-Arts, painting, sculpture, architecture, from what would now be called craft. However, the division between intellectual work and handwork had been underway for 200 years. During the Baroque era, superstar artists came into prominence. A growing number of nobility and aristocrats with power added to the number of private patrons, and they became free-spending clients and customers. Peter Paul Rubens from Flanders, the seven sections of the Low Countries ruled by the Catholic Spanish crown, was more than a painter to kings. He was also a diplomat, symbolizing the rising status of the artist. Artists were increasingly educated at art academies, such as the one in Bologna, founded by the Karachi brothers. Academy education quickly replaced workshop training, effectively eliminating any possibility a woman had of being privately trained by her father, as had Gentileschi. No doubt, women worked anonymously and uncredited in workshops, bottegas, to use the Italian terms, but the art academies excluded women as students.
But on the other hand, as we can see when viewing the elaborate, decorated, and ornamented Baroque architecture, decorative artists and designers were enjoying another golden age in the 17th century. And Versailles itself was a bonanza of jobs for artists. From architects to the mural painter and interior designer, Charles Lebrun, and the thousands of nameless craftsmen, builders, landscape architects, and gardeners. One should also mention the increased need for tailors and dressmakers for the members of the French court now gathered together in Versailles with nothing better to do than to dress well. During the reigns of Louis XIV and his son Louis XV, France became the capital of culture. Everything from food to architecture to fashion to painting to furniture was now aestheticized, made elegant and beautiful to an extent and on a scale that exceeded function, and the intensification of art forms became the hallmark of all things French. French.